Blessings, everybody. How's it going? It's time for an installment of New Light Astrology. And yes, this video is going to be just the astrology. Um, and we'll be talking about the incoming wave in another video. Just looking over my notes that I took for this video, I realized like this is going to be very, very long. And it's not that I'm against making a long video by any stretch of the imagination. But I feel just for the sake of having easier access and, you know, whether you're <laughs> watching it at home or listening to it on a walk or something like that, um, this would probably be better to do for this week. And I might vacillate back and forth, you know, depending on the week. And so, you know, don't get too attached to a specific format. But that's just what we're going to be doing this time. So this one's, again, New Light Astrology, the general astrology for the entire week. I do want to remind everybody that when it comes to weekly horoscopes, we have gone to a bi-weekly system. I know I put up the bi-weeklies that are in play right now pretty early, and so a lot of people caught those early, and, you know, the dates were a little further out, but we are in that zone right now. So you might want to go to my main channel page after this. Again, check out your horoscopes again, because we are now in the uh, new the post new moon two week zone that that bi-weekly covers and of course if you ever want to get a session with me you can always go to my website integrativemysticism.com let's talk about our new light astrology what are going to be the big atmospheric energies that are moving a lot of this week and what we can actually gauge as far as an experience uh, when it comes to what's going on in our own lives, our own personal journeys, remember, yes, this may have an effect on the external, on the macrocosm, you know, out in the world. But with that Saturn-Pluto conjunction earlier in the year, we are focusing on bringing it on home, right? Getting into our mastery and paying attention to what's going on in the microcosm. You don't want to get so distracted by the macrocosm and the external that the reality that you hold up in your own field, you know, your relationships, your family, your job, your personal abundance, all of the stuff that you are in charge of giving energy to and co-creating. So this week we have two big curve days or two big peak days that actually build up and then slope down in the, you know, two or so days prior and afterwards. And the first big peak day is the 20th, right? So that's coming up on Wednesday. But we're going to be feeling these energies as early as Monday and Tuesday. So don't get attached to the day either. But we've actually got Mars conjunct Uranus in Taurus and Mercury trine the north node. So that's our first big peak. It's Mars conjunct Uranus energy. Uranus is in Taurus. Mars is in Taurus. We've said it before. Uranus is pulling apart a lot of structures, a lot of mainstays, a lot of constants that have actually been maybe creating a bit of stagnancy, right? Creating a bit of a hold or a holding pattern in our lives, or things that seem to push for a bit of not just standstills, but maybe some regressions, some reversals in our process or in our progress. Now, this could be happening, of course, in relationships, your job, your physical health, whatever's going on there. With Uranus, what's happening, though, is that we also have this push towards heightened availability to be able to perform in that divine connection, that divine intelligent way, becoming a conduit. With Mars conjunct Uranus here, Mars is making this more aggressive, more pronounced, and forcing us to also take a bit of a look with that Mars ascended divine masculine energy and pay attention to what we are not applying our problem solving skills to or where the problem solving is being handled maybe poorly maybe we are not necessarily uh, managing properly a, uh, a material circumstance an emotional circumstance where do we need to pay attention to how you cannot fix 
a problem with the same vibration, the same energy, the same emotions, the same mentality, the same psychology that created it. This is where we're going to be seeing that being pushed to the forefront for us to really get a big look at and get a very clear look at. But Mars and Uranus together tend to be very aggressive attention grabbers. And when I was doing my live Patreon on Friday, I, I described this as aggravated breaks. Aggravated breaks of stagnant or otherwise unmoving or regressive trends, commitments, ways of being, lifestyles, uh, agreements, contracts, commitments across the board. So there will be, I think, some blow-ups. Now, the interesting thing is I don't see this as being as blow-ups always happening in people's faces. Sometimes this will come with a bit of grace. Some of you may be finding that this blow up is happening off stage somewhere. Some of you, yes, may be finding that this will be a cue to get ready to move on from something, to let something go, let something end. I feel very strongly with Mars conjunct Uranus, it is also hearkening back a little bit to some breakthroughs, some opportunities that almost caught their, their wind earlier this year and yet at the same time or maybe towards the end of December and yet at the same time got either held back or maybe there was a bit of a you know a, a slowdown there a redecide something that was going to keep a stagnant regressive or um, energetically oppressive or blocking kind of influence going for a little bit longer. It's almost like something is getting evicted from your life or you are getting a chance to break free of something, cut a ball and chain, cut a cord. But there was also some kind of grace that actually allowed that influence to stay longer than maybe it should have. This aggravated break is also going to push you out of a comfort zone, but also push you away uh, push everything apart that no longer actually belongs together, especially if it creates more discord, stagnancy, or regressive behavior. Mars conjunct Uranus, that aggravated break, is serving in the highest interest of all concerned, especially when we are thinking about situations where maybe some folks, and you might notice this as friends and family, are trying too, too, too hard in a very, very codependent way to give a pass to that which they know is only creating more harm. And so this is going to be a, a very, very strong week for that. But I do also want to mention that on the 20th as well, but we'll be feeling this at about, you know, end of Tuesday, we've got Mercury in Aquarius, that divine clarity, haste, movement, acceleration, accelerated growth, accelerated um, upward mobility when it comes to your talents, your skills, your abilities, the opportunity to, yes, make a bit of a freedom break, the opportunity to get into places where you are matching talent, skills, abilities, experience, passion, and motivation with those that are also on the cutting edge of whatever you are working on, whether it's in your field, your spiritual practice, your personal growth. We are talking about, however, those who are actually doing it, not those who are just posting it. We're talking about those that are actually walking their talk. We've got this breakthrough that is coming th from Mercury trine the North Node in Gemini. Okay, the North Node, right? That is sort of our guidance post. That is the energy center that is showing us where to go next. We lean in. Biggest challenges, biggest rewards. North Node in Gemini and Mercury in a trine from Aquarius. We have clarity of direction, mobility, destination, and trajectories. So it's almost like you're getting a nice hit of where, with all of this Mars conjunct Uranus craziness is going on, where you go next, where you are going after the crumbling, where you are going while the crumbling is going on, while that aggravated break is happening, 
you are seeing what is falling down and you are seeing where you are guided to go next. Now, this can show up in a number of different ways. Um, I, I do recall, you know, a situation in my life, this is back in uh, end of 2014. And it was a very, very weird uh, experience where over the course of about a week, um, there was this very difficult period that was going on in a living situation I was in. And um, one of the housemates had to go, but I was actually about to go out of town. And so it was like in a week, I had to figure out how to replace that housemate, as well as who's going to watch the cats, priorities. And yeah, who's going to, you know, keep up the house? Who's going to be on this lease with us? We had to let this other one go and it was better for them to go. Um, and then within that week, within actually about three days, a friend of mine called that was a perfect fit for that situation, made me feel better about going out of town because he was, you know, he was an armed security guard. And I'm like, good, you protect the cats with weapons. I like that. <laughs> but it was a very Mercury trine north node midst Mars conjunct Uranus experience. You have the solution breaking, overriding, and overwriting, or maybe not breaking, but maybe it's completely unrelated to the situation that's crumbling, but you have the solution offered at the same time. Now it is a test though, because sometimes we can get attached to maybe a redemption arc, right? Or we get attached to an arc where we think that um, if the dysfunctional project or the dysfunctional relationship or the toxic friendship or the bad living situation or the bad job or the bad project, whatever, um, goes away and we've kind of built a lifestyle or built a mentality around either trying to explain it away, fix it, get it to treat us better, or quite possibly, um, do mental gymnastics with ourselves to pretend it's actually healthier than it really is, it can be a bit disturbing. So the grace with this is that Mercury trying the North Node. If you can let, you know, if you can not just, you know, watch the crumbling, if you can make sure that you are not getting caught up, get into your mastery, take ownership of your mastery, do not let yourself embody that Mars conjunct Uranus energy, you don't have to destabilize. You don't have to freak out. You don't have to be a dysfunctional player in the game in that way. You do not need to co-create more distortion and chaos or react, right? We are going through this conscious evolution process. You're going to have that answer that's already there. It's just not screaming and yelling and making a fuss and making a scene. It is there. You just have to make sure that you are also a step back from the fray, being fray adjacent, and then, of course, catching your solution on the sidelines. And again, this builds up from about Monday, peaking Wednesday, and then going down through Friday. On Saturday, we actually have Mars in Taurus square Jupiter. And this builds up from about Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday of next week. And with Mars square Jupiter, it's important to maintain a balance with how we put forth new energies and new opportunities while we may still be handling stressors from earlier in the week. Because Mars square Jupiter is an aspect of abundance. It's an aspect of growth. We've got the divine ascended masculine problem solver, decisive action of Mars, square the divine ascended masculine cultivator, that assistance, that builder, that creator, that expander energy. And this is where Jupiter in Aquarius is now dispensing a great deal of support whether it's material support, social support, what have you, that is actually going to be problem solving, much like we saw with that Mercury uh, trying the North Node. But with Mars involved, it's going to be creating a, a, um, a, a weird kind of energy where it, you might feel like you need to do everything at once 
or it's, um, you know, that misdirection of the stress or the anxiety that might have come from earlier in the week. You might be bringing it to the new thing, right? We do not bring to the table. We don't bring to the new table where the love, the abundance, the peace, the, you know, the, the company, the kindness. We don't bring the distortion and the dysfunction from what we just came from, right? We don't throw the wrong vibration at the thing we want to keep. And that's been a big story of January for a lot of people. Uh, but with Mars square Jupiter, massive growth and abundance from chaotic shifts and breakdowns of unhealthy trends by force with replacements. And so it's about how willing we are to accept this alternative route. With How open are we to being on a real journey versus a contained simulation of a journey. We also have on Saturday, Venus in Capricorn, sextile Neptune. And with Venus in Capricorn, we have another gift. Because Venus in Capricorn is an investment that comes your way. An investment in you, an, an investment in your job, an investment in anything you've got going on. This could even just be a person showing up uh, that will be an investment you make in yourself by welcoming on board. But Venus in Capricorn sextile, so sextile as in a reach, a gift, again, assistance coming your way. Neptune in Pisces, we see this Gift that eases, augments, and speeds up shifts. When Venus sextiles Neptune, we get a bit of wish fulfillment, fantasy fulfillment. And it has to come and, you know, to fulfill a heart-centered fantasy. So again, it can't be a fantasy that you're copying and pasting from somebody else. It can't be a fantasy that you're just saying on a script, right? That's no good. That's no good. And, and a lot of people are going to be learning that because I've even encountered a lot of folks um, recently who are kind of, they don't know how to express their own heart. So they kind of hear things they've heard other people say before trying to make it work. Bad habit, right? That doesn't manifest anything. So we're going with Venus, Sextile, Neptune. Now we're seeing this shift where the real gift to maybe help get into the right place is there, how to do something the right way, how to seal a deal. Again, ease and augment a shift means, again, taking a lot of the stress or a lot of the tension out of the, the week prior. It's a time to see how well we do with keeping up with shifts in the moment, right? Because we've got a, a lot of tumultuous activity and then we have a lot of positive activity. And a lot of people who might not be very practiced in that staying in the moment, staying mindful, staying open, staying out of their fray, right? Embodying that divine intelligence, that mastery level might miss the gifts, the directions, the answers that are actually coming through that Mercury trine Nept, uh, sorry, North Node and Venus sextile Neptune energy. So that's what I've got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And should you ever want to get a session with me, all you need to do is go on to my website, integrativemysticism.com. I'm going to be doing uh, some work on that website over the weekend. So I will, you know, if you can't get in, I might be actually in there at that moment tinkering with a few things. But I don't plan on doing that until later in the evenings, uh, Saturday and Sunday. So you should be okay during the day. Uh, but just keep that in mind. Also, remember, I do present my findings for my lives on Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, U.S. and Canada, and Friday at 4 p.m. U.S. and Canada via my Patreon. And if you're interested in checking that out, again, you can follow the links down below. Mm -hmm.